Welcome back to another All Elite Review here on Fog Wrestling. We're back to review Dynamite. Another week, another shit show, another depressing review coming your way. A lot about, a lot to talk tonight about, but nothing really that good, but we're going to discuss it nonetheless. We're here with a fully fit, 100% fresh Son of Scotland 90 and uh, a, rather, a rather weak, a rather deed, a rather... Covid infected number two, also known as GW. What's happening, guys? Nineteenth of January edition. This guy should have got his job, whereas me, I don't need a job. It's no Covid, guys. All right, it's a fucking flu. I'll cut a pipe bomb on uh, Covid. That's for sure. But anyway, we're not here to talk about CM Punk just yet, because we kicked off the show with Moxley. Down, 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 down. You make my fucking ears bleed. Down, 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 down. Moxley. Right, so John Moxley makes his return. Three, four months out. Gets in the ring. Um, barely ten seconds into his promo. And he interrupts it because some guys shout it from the crowd. Get this piece of trash out the ring. Moxley told the guy to fuck off. And asked to, um, ask security to get rid of this piece of shit. Don't know if they did or not. I mean, that would be absolutely insane. Could you imagine if you bought tickets to Dynamite tonight and within the first five minutes of the show, you're getting kicked out because some fucking wrestler got his feelings hurt? I mean, honestly. It wasn't even that bad. Like, see, back in the day, man, holy fuck, I mean, Flair's telling you stories where the fans were fucking trying to kill you and all this shit. And, and, I mean, back in the day, like, wrestling heels were getting, like, dogs abuse. But Moxley is that fucking sensitive that he has to... Interrupt, and he, he probably thought he was a madman for telling some guy to fuck off, even though he's you know, fresh. I mean, if it was Brock Lesnar on the crowd, would they told him to fuck off? I don't think so. But anyway, don't know if that guy got ejected or not. But absolutely insane. If he, I mean, I can understand it almost if if the guy's like <laughs> saying the N word or something, like, you know. But I, you shouldn't be getting kicked out at a wrestling event for 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 like abusing the wrestlers. Right, it's not like you went your dad's date or something. I mean, come uh, on. His dad just died. Yeah, I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, is that not part of wrestling? Hostile crowds? What about ECW? It's like legit felt like if Cena beat RVD at one night stand, they would all jump the barricade and kill Cena. Exactly. Yeah, Moxley's pissing his pants and because someone called him a piece of trash. Well, you know what? Maybe you're a piece of trash and that's why you were out for three months, you drunk alcoholic bastard. Right? Mm. But anyway, he talked about demons and everybody's got them. And he basically says, oh, look, I'm not a bad guy because everyone's got demons. Blamed a bit on mental health and all that shit. And then says that he kicks demons' arses. And, well, he wasn't kicking it for the last three, four months, was he? Damn. And that he's thirsty and all he drinks these days is blood. Well, you know what? No, I'm drinking right now. I can't fucking iron brew. And that's better than anything I've seen on this show. So uh, keep your Kool-Aid, John Moxley, and get to the back of the line. What I will say is, though, I would I would put him as the second best uh, AEW world champ of all time. And that's not good. There's only been four, but in my opinion, he's he's he's, he's definitely number two. Who's third? Because we know who number one is. Oh fuck, who's third? Number one. Honestly, I would have to say Kenny Omega for the simple fact that I think he's just got name value. I mean, Adam Page really. Adam Page, the cowboy. I know the cowboy. I mean, come on. I mean, he came out on a horse once, like, but when he's got the wee horse team, he just doesn't look like a cowboy. No. He sticks out like a sore thumb. It's like that, yeah, Dan Lambert guy was telling the truth, like, I mean, look at all the cowboys and the... Cowboy Bob Orton. When I think of cowboys, I think of cowboy James Storm, like, but... JBL. <laughs> Wearing his fedora. Alright, well... I mean, not this boring bastard. I mean, have we ever seen... Adam, I know we're getting off topic here, but I've never even seen Adam Pearce take a swig of beer. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. John Moxley returns. He's pish. Wild thing. I mean, his themes. Even, I don't even like his theme. No. I don't know. I mean, Probably for mad, because we couldn't use this in WWE. Yeah, I've noticed that. AEW seem to get all these like licensed themes, and they think that they're brilliant, but a lot of them are shit. I, know. I mean, just because the theme's licensed doesn't mean it's good. Jim Johnson's came up with far better tracks, you know what I mean? Exactly. Even some of the... Oh, that, that shitey band, Downstate. I mean, even some of the downstate songs are better than this. I know, I know it's a bit lame, like when you hear them keep singing the the same song over and over again, like. But oh, radio is no bad, like. Oh, radio. I came to play. Uh, you know what I mean? That Dolph Ziggler's last song was no bad. 
I'm here to show the world I'm pitch. Anyway, my anyway. We yeah. move on. What was next? Big mixed man? tag team match. Oh. I don't like mixed tag team matches. I don't think they work. I think they destroy all the uh, psychology that goes with tag team wrestling. Uh, the, the fact that when someone tags in, the other person has to come in. It's just you, you can't properly have a mixed tag team match. It just doesn't work, guys. It fucking doesn't. And this match went about 25 minutes. Why? Do not know. Bunch of Canadian destroyers. I mean, back in the day, when I seen Canadi- when I seen Petey Williams hit the first ever Canadian destroyer, I was like, holy fuck. That is like the most extreme move I've ever... And he actually hit it good, right? When he when he hit it, it looked like you were dead. And no one kicked out of it. I don't think anyone kicked out the Canadian destroyer. I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone kick out of it on TNA. I don't care if they kicked through it in Ring of Honor or some piss show like that. I wonder about when TNA was getting over a million fuels. And it's high. Two guy. million fuels. You know what I mean? When you had Finn Russo and Kurt Angle there and Booker T and fucking White Snow. Nah, White Snow. Aye, big big Bobby Nash on the commentary. Sting. All those guys. Fucking Steiner. Freak Silla. Uh, the Dudleys. The main event, Matt. Aye. Do you know what I mean? All the good guys. Christian Cage. Captain Charisma. Back when TNA was, I mean, let's put TNA at its peak was definitely more was that a, a better number a two than AEW. I don't understand where people are coming from when they say AEW's done better than TNA ever done. It maybe perhaps in pay per view buys or whatever, but I mean, that doesn't mean shit to me. I'm fucking shocked it does though. <clears> hmm. <throat> well, see, TNA's pay per view buys were always pissed for some reason, and I don't know why. I don't think they advertised it very well. Yeah, this. no, Vince Russo came out and said they never advertised it. It says that they, they never, like, you know, that was never the real focus. So the focus, the focus was on... just staying alive as long as possible on life support. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know they're still alive, like, actually. But anyway, right, up oh, this match, right, crap, um, Britt Baker has a table spot, goes through it. I mean, they talk about her being the baddest bitch and all this stuff, and she's on the four pillars, yet she takes a really weak table bump as if she's a fucking diva from, like, you know, the 2008 era or whatever, so... Well, what is it? She's this. She's a bad bitch. That's one of the four pillars, or she's a woman that if she goes through a table spot, you think she's dead. Exactly. I mean, you kind of it both ways. Like, I mean, she barely fell through it, and they're, they're marking out as if this is. Like, I mean, come on. I mean, we've seen May Young get powerbomb for a table and nothing. But we're supposed to mark out for somebody. It's supposed to be up there with the best in terms of men and shit as well. Yeah. So I don't understand. Adam Cole. May is... Young's had better matches than Brett Breaker. I think Britt Baker's massively overrated. Like, uh, yeah, Adam Cole wins. Adam Cole, wait, wait, wait. Guy's fucking... He's shite. Skinniest fat man you'll ever see. It's got the worst physique, I think, in fucking wrestling. Because at least... At least Dewdrop might be a fat fucking bastard, right? But at least you can say, well, you can use that weight to your advantage. This guy can't see, The way Adam Cole... You, you can't... You know what I mean? You just... It's like Yorker Suno, you can use that weight to your advantage. This guy here, he, he's skinny, but with fat. Yeah, he's, he's skinny fat, it's just, it's the worst body technique you can get. I mean, I mean, look at Walter, Walter's just like chubby fat, and that works. It's like Kozlov. Yeah, the, but the, the whole Adam Cole's body type is just, uh, it's the worst one you can get in wrestling. And He's got it. Yeah, I think he's actually got the worst body I've ever seen. Is that for a pro wrestler? Because he's skinny as fuck. But well, he's Big fat. Daddy Fee's pretty bad, mate. I did. Big Daddy Fee made that work. Oh, Colin O'Connor. Colin O'Connor. Colin O'Connor kebabs. Well, don't get me wrong. Like, it killed him, but I mean... Oh, it worked. It worked, aye. It's not, about, it's not about longevity, right? It's about fucking making an impact. And they did. Another TNA reference there. Anyway, Adam Cole wins. Then he challenges Orange Cassidy to a match next week. Street fight. Anything goes. The only thing that'll be going is uh, my my thumb hitting the, the the TV control to change the channel because I don't want to watch that. Then we see him punk up next versus Sean Spears. Are we going to get a good match? No, we're getting an eight second squash match because I guess the, the tag team match went too long. Who knows? I mean, why not cut fifteen minutes off that and actually do a decent enough match? I wanted to see the chairman. Perfect ten. This serves really wasn't a perfect ten. Didn't he go ten seconds? Uh-huh. Punk wins. MGF comes out, confronts him. When Punk turns around, MJF bottles it and, and runs out and CM Punk steals his scarf. Again, I can say this was great build-up. It really wasn't. I don't, why is MJF breaking it so much? I mean, a couple of weeks ago, he was in the same ring with Punk. I know. I know. He, he, Cutting it for 20 minutes. But now he can't be in the same ring as Punk for two seconds. 
But fucking JD, New York, like I'll say that this is great booking that Tony Khan's the man when in reality... And then also, like, they're supposed to be in a heated feud and Punk could have attacked them. It's not like he jumped out the ring after a second. It was about 15 seconds. He had him by the I know scarf. He, had, he had him by the scarf. I mean, he could have just battered him then and there. But, but he didn't. But he held back. I wonder why. <laughs> so thing he could make his escape. Um, up next, then, we had Cody Rhodes making his return. Awful. Uh, got a bit angry at the start. And then... Say they wouldn't turn heel because the guy stuck by him. Then he went on to talk about CM Punk. Kiss CM Punk's ass for about two minutes. Then put over a bunch of guys in the company. Said that Brody King's got some nerve. Or you've got to be good to come in with the name Brody. No, you don't. you just got to be a mediocre big guy. And not dead. Yeah, I just... I just don't get it. It's not like it's not like Taker's dead. And some guy's come in and he's called... Taker? <laughs> yeah. No, nowhere near. Uh... Yeah, I just didn't get this. Then he eventually ended it with, you know, Sammy Guevara, me, you, two belts, one champion next week. Bash at the beach, ladder match. Sat on top of the ladder. Uh, is it people comparing this to HBK Razor. I think those people should take a razor to the uh, wrists. To the wrists. Aye. It was awful. Uh, then we had Serena Deeb versus Blue Jeans, or Blue Pants, or whatever the fuck she's called. Serena Deeb wins. I thought you were just saying that because you had no idea who her name was and that was just the only thing. No, I'm pretty sure her name's Sky Blue Jeans or something. I don't know. Sky Blue Jeans. Um, anyway, Serena Deeb wins. Who Straight cares? Society. I don't. Uh, then we had the kings of the the Dark Kings. I mean, just absolutely ripping off Game of Thrones here. Yep. I mean, it's not even... It's not even like they're taking elements again. <laughs> it's like House of Black and all this, telling everyone to rise. And I mean, why not just fuck? You know what I mean? Like, we don't like Game of Thrones here, so it makes it even worse. We it's say it's, just, it's great. just lame. And I think Malachi Black was better on his own. See this, and I tell you what. See with Malachi Black and this new dude, Brody King. They've got to be up there for some of the worst tattoos I've ever seen. Yep. Why does everyone in AEW have shit tattoos? Oh. Uh -huh. I mean. Bro Malachi Black and Brody Lee tattoos are shit. Cody Darby Rhodes. Allen's tattoos are Cody Rhodes that fucking one that neck. neck tattoo absolutely horrendous. I mean CM Punk. I think when he got the sleeve on his chest, it looked absolute shit. Just crap tattoos, man. Um, who knows where Dean Dean Moxley probably was a big fucking Dean Moxley. Aye, uh, probably was a Moxley. He's probably got a big beer bottle on his back. Eddie Kingston's got a lot of flab, so he, I don't know how many tattoos but he has. a big smiley face. Uh, then with Jericho backstage, he was going to, he was talking about Kingsley, and then the Poundland version of LAX told Jericho not to, um, not to talk about Kingsley. When he's be not because Kingston. Kingston. Ah, right, you're calling him Kingsley. I don't give a fuck. He's shite. Kingston, not to talk about him because Kingston's had his back. Unlike you and Jericho's like, what are you talking about? I had your back. And they're like, when? Last week. And they're like, no, when have you properly had our back? And then they, they walked up. Jericho, what? you don't need these people. You don't fuck. I mean, this is the shite version of LAX. This isn't the, you know, version with Conan, man, that came out with that great wee song in TNA. It sounded like a song for GTA, uh, San Andreas. This is the, this is the pish version. This isn't Homicide with the gringo killer, Hernandez, Supermix, fucking doing the mad avalanche splash over the top rope. Border bombs. I mean, board, board, the border bomb, the, the the gringo killer. I mean, fucking great names for finishers. I mean, the border bomb. Two illegals that shouldn't even be in the border, and he's hitting people with the border bomb. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, got. I mean, this. I don't even know what the, the name of these two. What are they called? Um, Hector or something. Hector Salamanca. No, what, what's the what's the, the two, those two guys called? I have no idea. Pineland LAX. Hector and is it not Hector on Sunday? But why are they why are they allowed to be called LAX? Were they in TNA before? Aye. Basically, Hernandez and Homicide left and, and TNA brought in two fucking bums and thought, oh, these guys are Mexicans, we'll just call them LAX. That's a Vince McMahon gimmick. You know what? It'd be like taking Michaels and Hunter out of DX and putting in fucking... That's name me two shite people. Dolph Ziggler and Cody Rhodes. Aye, and go, oh, here's the new DX. I mean, nah, it's pish. It's not the new DX, right? It's the new fucking Cody Rhodes and whatever. Absolute garbage. Uh, what else did we have? Um, we had Sting and Darby Allen. Sting and Darby Allen, big tag the, uh, team match the against the acclaimed. The acclaimed number one in the rankings, apparently, but that wasn't enough to uh, beat the team of Sting and Darby Allen. 
I think Sting unbeaten in his whole AEW tenure. And you know what? I have no problem with that. I mean, Sting's a fucking legend. And, and should he be really losing to a guy called Max Caster? Who comes out and, and spins a couple of raps? But why aren't it? why aren't Sting why, and Darby Allen for challenging for the titles? Yeah, what, what what's it going to lead to? Is Sting not losing? Is it ever going to lead to them getting a shot at the tag titles, or is it going to lead to Sting getting? I mean, why can't Sting have a? See if he's going to lose a match. Why can't it be for the world title? I know. I mean, come on. Because if he goes into that match undefeated, you may think, "Fuck, he could beat Page." And I hope, well, I, hope I hope it's not a Page he loses against. No. I mean, come on. Sting versus fucking Punk or Sting versus Jericho. It has to be that. But Sting was looking very old awesome What about match. Sting versus MJF? I think a lot of people would... I mean, I think that MJF's a big heel and a lot of people... That's probably one of the... Probably the better big, matches. Big, better matches they could do. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure Sting would lose to him. Like, that could put MJF over. But who knows? Um, that's it, guys. That's your aid. Sting and Darby Allen win. Sting does a big splash off the stage. For he's the only one that goes through it. Um, Darby Allen again hits the coffin drop. How can a sixty-pound man land on somebody? Really, I don't know. It's, it's garbage. It's pish. And, and it's a tire. Some wee skinny fucking emo skateboarder who wears uh, leggings with fucking booty shorts. I mean, it's just. It's going to be the leader of a company one day, according to Sting. Yes, after after AEW after the Sting cut a promo. He kept mentioning ninety-seven. and don't know what he was going for. What happened in ninety-seven? Well. The star star kid me a fan. I don't know. Stick, Hogan kicked out and he wasn't supposed to. What did they claim kick out the night and they weren't supposed to? I don't know to? what the fuck he was going for. I don't know. Um, he said 2002 instead of twi- Oh, I'm good and old. But anyway, talk about numbers rating. Let's go. I'll get a. <laughs> I'll get a minus one. It was fucking atrocious. I mean, we've got Cody Rhodes putting over the Wednesday Night Wars, and then the next sentence he says, "Oh, they're put. They're just beating developmental." He's a fucking inbred. I'll get a one. And then he talks about he can't beat the world title. No, he can't win the world title. But yet he says all the belts are the same. He, he says that people have Fuck been shit. people have been programmed into thinking that um a world unless the the word world is in a title then it isn't the best. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it means. Like the Euro- the European title was not better than see, the based WWE off, championship. See based off his logic, then what's the point of a main event match? None. You know what I mean? Like, see, back in the day, if all titles were treated the same, like if Austin was taking on Taker for the belt halfway through Raw instead at the end, you'd be like, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, well, why Spike Dudley taking on William Regal's great? But why Spike Dudley taking on William Regal for the European title in the main event? Yeah, why the hardcore title not main event WrestleMania? He's a fucking retard. And on that note... Why'd St- why, why does Sting no face uh, Hogan for the... Um... The TV title at Starcade main event. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why is he going to face them for the WCW World He's Championship? A fucking inbred uh-huh. bastard. Uh-huh. 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 Why? Yeah. Why? Why? When they brought EC back in 2006, why did they? Why did they need to bring an ECW World Championship? Why didn't they just uh, move the Intercontinental title on ECW and have that as the main title? Exactly. Because you need a fucking world title, you spastic. Just a minute. If you want to be world champ, it's good. It's all good in the hood. Nobody cares, right? Fact is, you're one of the biggest stars in AEW. You, sh- you should be eligible to compete the fact that Cody Rhodes actually cannot be in the world title picture in my opinion is a disaster yeah see that stupid rule you made oh if I lose I'll never scrap that nobody remembers anyway right <laughs> nobody cares I mean everyone's moved on for that just uh, man up and just because you win the belt once doesn't mean you're Triple H I know you know what I mean he has to try and get one over and... I mean why are all these guys him and Punk man two bitter bastards I thought Bret Hart was a bitter bastard these two take it to the next level. It's sad. I don't. I mean, I fucking don't think Triple H or Vince McMahon lose any sleep over no. Cody Rhodes or it's CM sad. Punk. He's probably moved on. At least with Bray, he's got a legit fucking. I think he's got a legit case. What they did with Owen and the screw job. I don't. Punk pisses me off. Oh, you never. You, you, know, you never got the main event. But that, that, that is just pure bad luck. The fact that your two years on top. Of, you know, I mean, your two your two biggest years in the company had to be the two years. Where the WrestleMania was CM Punk, uh, Cena versus Rock. No one was going to main event. I mean, fucking Taker didn't main event those WrestleManias. Rock didn't. Rock didn't. Uh, Triple H didn't. didn't. If Michaels was there, he wouldn't have. I mean, for fuck's sake. Right? It's just unbelievable. Unfucking believable. 
He's a prick. And the Miz only made a fence at the last one to build up Cena Rocks. Oh. Well, how does he think him and Jericho's going to make a fence? Like, it's just not. I don't know. I mean, you can you can almost under I can almost accept where he's coming from at Mania twenty nine, but twenty eight. I mean, it was come on. I know. Come on. I know, but then you could argue at twenty nine. We'll see in rocks for the belt. Yeah. So you can't really. Plus, it's repeat or revenge, and it's just better. Tell it's a one on one match, and then Punk's like, add me in triple threat. I'll take the pin. I'll take the pinfall in the first five minutes and get eliminated. That would just be shit. I know. So he, he doesn't even want a good WrestleMania main event. He just wants to be... That's a bit lame. <laughs> what, would you, what would you rather, seriously? Take on Taker, like, two and a half hours into the show and actually have a great match of the night with a good build-up, a good feud, or, or just be thrown into a triple threat match and lose in the opening five minutes. I know. He's a fucking ember. But here, apparently, facing Taker at Mania, that's not professional wrestling, apparently. No, nope, that's bad. I mean, what's CM Punk? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck AEW Dynamite. This show sucks. And that guy that comments, whatever your name is, Sitters. you go fuck Sit yourself too. Till next time, peace. Oh yeah.